ho, 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 everybody. Welcome to another Christmas movie review. I'm Sean. You're watching Zoobox. And today, we're going to be talking about the recently released 2021 film, Silent Nights. You look perfect. Fly! Oh, did you bleed on the carrots? Will I die? Yep, probably. Grandma! Happy Christmas. You're still alive? Yes, I think so. Jesus, they're early. Ah! Tony and Simon robbed the petrol station. Oh, what fun. The we film is directed by Camille Griffin. It's also written by Camille Griffin. It stars Kira Knightley, Matthew Good, Roman Griffin Davis, Annabelle Wallace, Lily Rose Depp, Soap Derisu, Kirby Howell Baptiste, Lucy Punch, Rufus Jones, Davida McKenzie, and others. The logline plot synops synopsis is Nell, Simon, and their son, Art, are ready to welcome friends and family for what promises to be a perfect Christmas gathering. Perfect except for one thing. Everyone is going to die. I just think we should be honest with the kids. We know the Russians want us all dead. They're sending poisonous gas to kill us all in the morning. It's not the Russians. It's the planet. It's way upset. It will kill anything and anyone that is still alive. So yeah, this was uh, not on my radar at all. The only reason I knew about it at all is because I got AMC Plus. AMC Plus during like Black Friday, basically what they did was like, we'll give you AMC Plus for one ninety nine a month if you pay yearly. I don't know if that's going to be in perpetuity, but so I got AMC Plus for twenty twenty four bucks for the year. And I was like, okay, sure, why not? Why not? I'll get it. Like we were at home, we're trying to like basically cut off all the unnecessary streaming services so we're like getting rid of netflix we got rid of hulu until there was a black friday deal for hulu that was like 99 cents a month so now we have hulu back so we got rid of like netflix disney plus stuff like that we're just kind of shaving those things off because they add up man they really do but amc plus is kind of cool because it encapsulates a lot of different stuff it's like amc sundance now shutter so i actually got rid of my shutter thing because i was like well i can just watch the shutter stuff through amc plus and I saw that this is on there. AMC Plus is Silent Night, or like that's where it's premiering. You can also rent it. I think you can go to Amazon and you could rent it if you want. But if you got AMC Plus, or maybe you go get like a free seven day trial or something like that, you can totally check it out. Um, I didn't know anything about this movie before I watched it. I didn't even know that synopsis. I had no idea. I didn't even watch a trailer. It just was like, oh, it's like it's a Christmas movie. It's called Silent Night. I'm talking about Christmas movies this year. Might as well check it out, just randomly. So for me, even that would have been like a, a <laughs> would have been a spoiler, or whatever trailer I cut into here. I'm sure it's probably it probably just tells you what the movie is about. I didn't I didn't realize that. So it acted as kind of a series of reveals, um, in a way that it's not going to for anybody else that's like watching a review of this movie or looking it up or reads the plot synopsis or whatever. But Anyways, so let's just talk about the movie. Um, it's fine. <laughs> it's kind of whatever. It's it's a dramedy horror movie. I would say it's not really a horror movie. More of like a dark comedy, but really leans more on drama, being a straight drama film. Um, I, don't, I don't even know how to talk about this without like kind of spoiling it. Well, they, they kind of just tell you everything in the first 20 minutes. So I'll just stick to like the first 20 minutes of information. And I won't spoil the ending and stuff like that. But basically, there's a gas and tornadoes. The, the planet has rejected humanity. The planet is fighting back. We've been polluting. We've been wasting a Mother Earth's resources. And she is mad. And she's come to call the herd. Don't be ridiculous, Kitty. It's not the Russians. It's the planet, Kitty. It's very upset. Kitty, for years the planet has absorbed everyone's filthy rubbish and it's had enough. It can't take it anymore. So it's spitting it back out as a fuck you to the world. Oh, that's right, Kitty. We've taken the earth for granted. Haven't we, Dad? Mm -hmm. 
So the governments all around the world basically have given everybody a suicide pill so that you don't have to suffer the agonizing death of this toxin. It's like something that makes your nervous system go all crazy and you can snap your own back and vomiting and blah, 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 all that stuff. It's kind of like you ever see the movie The Rock? You know, when, they take the, when the guy gets hit with that poison gas and he starts like bubbling and freaking out. That's kind of what I imagine it would be like. And um, so this is like a family and friends that get together on Christmas Eve. They have like kind of one last celebration all together because in the morning, the tornadoes and the gas are going to come and they're going to kill everybody. So they're just going to have a great party, a fun Christmas, and take their suicide pills and go to bed. And obviously, as the movie goes on, all of these kind of interpersonal relationship stuff ensues. There's like doubt about like, you know, people being paranoid or, or questioning the official story even like, well, is this actually what they say it is? And because according to the government, they don't legally exist. Of course they do. Not in their system, they don't. It's complicated. That's wrong. They're going to die horrible, horrible deaths. We have to help them. Don't be ridiculous, Aunt. I'm not ridiculous. We can't even help ourselves. All we can do is... take our pills and choose not to suffer. We have a choice. No, no. We don't have a choice, no. And what does it mean? Is life still worth living in the face of imminent death? That's kind of the big question the movie has. That's what looms over everything, all the characters. Even the characters that are like pro taking the suicide pill. It is something that they contend with, this notion. Um, it doesn't really go very deep into any of that kind of stuff, but it's paid enough lip service where it'll give you something to think about. The, you know, the idea is like, well, I could live and maybe die a horrible, painful death. Or maybe not. Or I could take the suicide pill and I know exactly what's going to happen. There's a predictability there, right? And <laughs> as the movie goes on, you just, like I said, a lot of interpersonal relationship stuff. Actually, uh, Sandra didn't talk to me until we were 15. Oh, come on. In fact, none of you did. That's because you were terribly boring. <laughs> Boring? <laughs> That's so cool. you me. No. I was just very grateful you didn't want to scratch my back. Oh, you love having your back scratched. With you, dear, mm. yes. And James arrived from Nigeria with his school fees in his suitcase. Mm. Oh, you were very African when you arrived. <laughs> oh, come on, you sound like Mowgli from the Jungle Book. <laughs> Mowgli have an American accent. Mm. I think Mowgli's from India. never fucked me. Wow. Jesus, Sandra. Um, it's not very funny. Uh, the characters are not very well defined or etched. So you, they're kind of archety archetypes to a certain degree. Because uh, you, you don't... It's a very short movie. It's like 90 minutes. It's a very tight little film. So I appreciated that. It's probably actually one of the reasons I watched it. I was like, oh, a 90-minute movie? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> the older you get and the less free time you have, you're like, 90-minute movies rock. Um, so nothing, none of the characters get very well developed and you never really feel attached to them outside of like, you know, the natural attachment or empathy you might have for their plight. Right. Um, and then there's tons of stuff. There's tons of like, you know, just nonsense shit. Like there's a, there's even lines about like Greta Thunberg in here and look Kitty, Greta warned us. She missed all that school. She spent weeks ceasing. She even met Leonardo DiCaprio and, and still... No one listened to her. Sorry. Oh, we should have listened to Greta. <laughs> also, like, oh, the fucking conservatives. We should have all voted green. Fucking conservatives. Like, it's so on the nose. It's so obnoxious because it's, you know, it's basically like an eco, eco thriller environmental message, you know? Don't misuse the planet. At some point, the planet's going to come back and it's going to get your ass. And it's, I don't know. It's, so it was interesting in that respect. Uh, it, interesting that it was <laughs> how not 
subtle it was. It's not a very subtle movie. A lot of things are just kind of plainly stated, for lack of a better way to put it. Like, they don't hide the ball. And there's a smugness to it that I thought was mildly off-putting. It's just as an audience member, there's a little bit of this, like, kind of preachiness to it that I thought was just kind of obnoxious, honestly. Um, and especially since you have kind of characters that are so thinly sketched, that stuff felt way more pronounced. Um, all the actors are pretty decent um, when they're not being obnoxious. I would say Kira Knightley and Matthew, Matthew Good stick out as being actually pretty good. The kids aren't bad. Uh, and then you have kind of more your comedic presence there with uh, like Lucy Punch, especially Lucy Punch and Rufus Jones. You know, if you're familiar with like kind of British comedy, they're, that they're there to be kind of the overt comedic support where you could, but you could say everybody has kind of a comedic role to it because of the the natural absurdity of the whole situation, right? But could I recommend Silent Night to people? I don't know, like, if you have AMC Plus for some reason, like me, and you got 90 minutes to kill, there's worse ways to spend 90 minutes. Like, I wouldn't say it was like, I hated it. I was just kind of indifferent about it, and there is, it was a little annoying. It's a little smug. It's a little smug, a little proselytizing, a little preachy. Um, which I just, I just think, like, to me, it's more indicative of bad writing. Like, to me, like, having that there as kind of the subtext of the movie, that's fine. But when characters just speak the subtext out loud, I just, I don't know. It really just it annoys me. It annoys me in every movie. If you're familiar with this channel, if you've watched any Goes to the Movies episodes, like, it occasionally comes up, and I say that same thing over and over and over again. Um, but, yeah, I'd give it a pass. I would not rent it. I would not pay cash money outside of already paying cash money for that streaming service. But... I don't know. Like, if you're really bored and you just want to watch kind of a different kind of Christmas movie, a horror Christmas movie, eh, eh, eh. Anyways, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Tony and Simon robbed the petrol station. Oh, what fun. Mmm. <laughs> Kitty wanted sticky toffee pudding. Yeah. Yes, excellent choice.